right, is there's always cogs in this wheel. And it's not just about, uh, you know, building energy systems. We, we need to become better with technique. We need to become faster in order for these things to, to be repeated at a higher level. Because if all we do is make a shitty player be able to run more times, well, they still suck. <laughs> talk about guys is building the engine and how we train our athletes here um a little background on me i'm the head strength and conditioning coach for basketball here at the university of richmond in richmond virginia i've been here for 11 years um and it's uh basketball is obviously a different game and what's really interesting with our situation now is we're practicing just about 12 months out of the year uh in the last three years we've averaged 44 weeks of practice so how we handle our conditioning is 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 a pretty pretty interesting interesting little uh, experiment you could say. So what we need to understand though, right, is there's always cogs in this wheel, and it's not just about uh, you know building energy systems. We we need to become better with technique. We need to become faster in order for these things to to be repeated at a higher level. Because if all we do is make a shitty player be able to run more times well they still suck so we need to make somebody better with uh you know their movement capacities and such otherwise all you're doing is running around and you're trying to find a unicorn uh if you have one great that's awesome uh rumor is somebody found one somewhere uh in you know the other side of the world but uh no proof has been shown that these actually exist what we are going to talk about more is building the repeatability um where I really do hang my hat is the speed and the technique work, and I've talked about that extraneously. Um, Kier's talked about the stuff that we do over here extraneously, so we're going to kind of skip over that because all of that stuff, I mean, you, you guys, I'm not going to insult your intelligence and repeat things that have probably been said to you 20, 30 times when it comes to what the Vrkoshanskis teach and, and what Dr. Yeses teaches. You want to talk about two birds with one stone? Here it is. Everybody wants to talk about hill sprints for speed and um, for speed and acceleration mechanics and, and improving those. Well, it's also another method that can be used to increase mitochondrial density in the type two fibers. Again, this is the work of Viktor Solyunov, and Val has communicated this at nauseum. I believe Joel calls these high resistance intervals in his book, but I, I could be mistaken. What are we looking at? One to four sets, 15 to 30 reps. It can be done for time, too. Um, this is something that I've never done for sets. I know people that do do this for sets, but I never have. Um, you want your heart rate to spike, but less than 170 beats per minute. And then this is kind of where you get to toy around with it is you take off when you know at whatever heart rate they don't spike over it a lot of people want to have like full recovery and, and really long long breaks between these i don't know if that's completely necessary um we've been we've had kids that can go when they break 150 we've had kids that have to wait until they break 130 we've had one kid that had to wait until he broke 120 uh, and sometimes it depends on the day. You're running these things like the zombie apocalypse is chasing you down. Like the cops are chasing you with a pack of dogs. Um, if it ain't all out, it ain't, it ain't what we want. And the big thing, and I think that this is something that we've learned uh, in the past three years of doing this is that possibly those Russian translations are not wrong. Whenever you look at exercises when they involve a hill, it's typically translated as running into the hill. It's never written as run up a hill. We have the kids block off their nose. I don't know what, why this guy's not. Uh, maybe he's got allergies or a cold. Uh, but, you know, this is something that people look at and they giggle at. 
and they're like, yeah, whatever. But every four minutes in college basketball, there's a media timeout. If those media durations go long, so let's say it's five minutes and it's up and down, nobody can buy a bucket, or it's just like a snowball fight, people are chucking the ball all over the place, turning it over, and we're sprinting up and down the court, and you see these kids come over, and they're huffing and puffing. Well, the kids that focus on this and do this right, you just see, <sighs> and in three breaths, they're good. The kids that don't, they look like they need a, a freaking paper bag because they're hyperventilating. And then they're like, what do I do? And I'm like, I don't know. You should have figured that out in August. This is a great $25 to $30 U.S. investment. And I'm not just saying that because Doc's my guy. I'm saying that because this works. This is real. And if you can get your kids to buy in, it'll really, really improve performance. How we utilize these is we start two minutes on, one minute off, two minutes on, and you can adjust the dials and we start them at 1-1. We add a minute each week, so we go 3-1-2, then we go 3-1-3, 4-1-3, up until five minutes. And then we start to increase uh, the resistance. Need to make sure that the kids are breathing into their belly button, right? They're filling their lungs, they're expanding their ribs, they're pulling down with their diaphragm, blah, blah, blah. We know all the breathing stuff, right? But we need to make sure that they're doing it right and that they're pulling hard and pushing hard. Now, what do you do if you don't have this fantastic technology? I'm lucky, man. I'm, I'm just going to say it flat out. I'm really lucky to have the relationship I have with Omega Wave. So I've gotten to meet Victor. I know Val pretty well. You know, then Joel actually is the guy who got me in with all of them. Well, this is very indicative of what we do. This is the exact questionnaire that our kids look at every morning. This also plays a role in how we set things up. This is part of the dashboard that we give to the staff. Um, and what we look at here, guys, I personally... <clears throat> excuse me, I personally look at individual scores and fluctuations. But what we really look at overall, and what the coaches look at, and we'll give them notes if there is, is changes in the norm. Why changes in the norm? Because if it's a normal day, I'm going to walk in and I'm going to say I'm a 3 3 3 4, four. That's just me. But... If you actually spend the time to look at it and think about it, then we know that you really are good. Or if you spend the time and, and look at it and, and your scores go down, we know that there is something going on. And you psychologically may not be ready to go. So it isn't the score that matters in this sense. It's looking at things, whether it be within plus or minus a standard deviation or just a random outlier, right? So let's say, so 33344 is going to be 17. Let's say I'm 17, 17, 20. That 20 day, yo, let's go, JD. It's time to work. We can push it. Or let's say I'm 17, 17, 10. Whoa, what's going on, man? You good? Thanks for watching this highlight clip. If you want to watch this entire presentation, head over to strengthcoachnetwork.com and for a dollar, you can try out the whole site for 24 hours, no strings attached, and get access to this presentation and hundreds more just like it.